Hello everybody, welcome back to another episode of Resident Rise. My name is Brink, and as you can see I have some furry friends with us today. I went to the twilight and gathered up some deer and placed an auto spawner around in various places right on the floor with a tesseract on top. Place a safari net inside and spawn maybe three or four on each corner of the property all around. Uh, if we look around, you will also find a couple of bunny rabbits hopping around. Uh, and they even climb up as high as up here. And uh, hopefully they won't, they won't get into the base. But yeah, they, they're uh, roaming around. And I like it. I like to see, you know, some movement out here. It looks like the, uh, the landscape is being used properly, the way I wanted it. Uh, I've colored this dark and I've extended the elevators all the way to the top floor where our reactor is going to be. Uh, this elevator will not be here. The two lower ones over here will be changed. So there will be an elevator somewhere maybe here and a couple on each corner. It will make it look a little bit better when we get to the top floor. Because in the top floor we're going to need some space here. This is going to be massive. Very big. Um, Let's go down and go into the ME system and you'll see some of the things that I've done on off camera. I've laid these out just to give me an idea of some of the things that I will need to make some ludicrite blocks because that's going to be a major build. And the kind of recipe that I'll be using will be this one for this case. I won't be killing a billion withers and spawning a million... Uh, villagers to get all the emeralds that I'll be needing this time. This time I'm going to go for this one. And for this, we have enough plutonium. We got way more blaze than we need, but the endearium blocks may be an issue. I'm not going to be using the tinker smeltery, although that is another method by which to get it. I will be using, let's see if we can find the method for making the endearium ingots. This is a nice method. I've done it. I've done them all. But the one I'm going to be going with is this one. And th this is the issue that for each one of these things, it takes so many little uh, steps below each to get to them. So, for example, the pyrothium, as you all know, is this. And you have to have these prepared. So you have to have enough sulfur. You got to pulverize the coal, which I have a craft for that. We got plenty of redstone. That's not a problem. Then we got to powder, uh, pulverize the blaze. I think I have enough already for that. Uh, if we back up and go now, instead of the pyro, we go to the endurium base. We're going to need two tin, one silver, and I think I have enough shiny to do the whole process. In fact, I know we do, because I just noticed we, we make four out of this. And my craft, I don't think that I set it for four. I may want to check that just to make sure. Let's go back here and check it real quick. Just to make sure I did. I didn't do it for four. So that's good. That's a bonus. We'll do that. And that will reset it. And so I will place these into here. And here's the thing. That not all of them go into the molecular assembler area. Some of them need to go into process. Uh, processing type things. So this is a craft of course. Uh, this is two tin, one silver, one shiny. It gets crafted. I wonder, it doesn't say craft here or process. So I got to sort of figure it out. This looks like it's an alloy smelter. So I got to go over to the alloy smeltery side. Let's see if we can find this. There's a lot of machines on here. So this will be the first one for the alloy smelteries, I guess. Uh, what do we have here? This is redstone, sulfur, and pulverized coal. Looks like a craft to me. Uh, I'm hoping uh, this will be right, but if it isn't, it doesn't matter. It'll just stop its process and wait for some action. So pulverized coal, of course, goes into the pulverizer. And uh, as you guys know, some of the things that go into a pulverizer produces way more output than it does in a sag mill. It depends on what you're doing. Uh, so we'll set this up. And now here's the thing that for the turbines that I'm going to be building, I do have to keep in mind that I have one already built. And this one is a working thing. So 
I don't want to dismantle it and move it upstairs just yet because I don't want to have to run two reactors at the same time. I mean, I could cut this reactor off and then run the big one, but then that's using up a lot of energy. That reactor upstairs is quite big and less efficient than this one is. Uh, my design over here that I've built with Aaron is one that's very, very efficient. Um, and I like it a lot. It works great. It pr produces the amount of power that I want. Here's the thing, though. I want to keep this running and build the other three. And then at the end of that, I'll power them up, make sure they work. And then I'll move this one up there just to make sure that I always have some amount of power running at the same time. So let's go back here. Now, some of the things that we're going to be making, uh, turbine glass, for example, we're going to need turbine reactor housings or turbine housings is what's the, what they're called. So I think what I'm going to do is make these first because this has a recipe including these. So I think it'd be safer to have the amount I need of the glass and then additionally add these because otherwise if it sees it in the ME system, it'll use it up and then I'll have to craft it again anyway. So I think it's better to craft the glass first. And what I have as far as numbers is 15 stacks of turbine glass. That comes out to 960. So that's quite a bit. Let's run that. Looks like we have enough stuff. And I think I do have a craft for glass which is part of the recipe, so it'll use some of that. Now the next thing, we have a lot of uh, crafting bays and we have crafting coal processors interlinked with each other, so we could run another craft while we're doing this one. Uh, the next craft I wanna do is the turbine reactor casings. Now, maybe I'll hold off on that, because I wanna make sure that this glass is finished first. It looks like it's smelting some glass in the, uh, the furnace, though. I think that's what it's stuck on right now, yeah. We will hold off on the turbine casings. What we'll do next, let's make uh, four stacks of blades, though. We're going to need blades. And it's 80 per, 80 per turbine. So we have a craft for it. And 80 times 3 comes out to 240. Let's set that in motion. It's going to need a lot of cyanide, but I think I have enough there. Yeah, it's making it just fine. Uh, one stack of the rods for the turbines. And if we look that up, I think I have a craft for it. There it is. We need uh, one stack of them. I have one already, so let's make 63 of them. 63 should do us right. Let's see if it counts the one I just put in there. And 64. It did it perfectly. Okay, so now we can go back to the turbine casings, but we gotta take a look at what's holding this up. Yeah, it's cooking up the glass. Maybe the export wasn't set correctly. Let's troubleshoot this a second. So, yeah, it looks like it's this guy up here being worked. The glass is making its way out. Where is it going? Let's fly up here. Getting a little bit of frame loss. I think it's with all the entities that are flying around. Uh, yeah, so the glass is going somewhere. This is an import bu bus back into the ME system. It looks like it's correctly uh, set. Let's go back down here. Check out the glass. And the glass is here. And it's being used up somewhere. And this is 87 still. So where is it going? Let's take a look at the process for it. Uh, let's see. So, yeah, I'm not sure where the glass is going. I guess I'll give it some time to see where it's going. Uh, we're at 87 still. This vanilla glass isn't going anywhere. And I don't think, see anything else going up in, in size. You know what I'm thinking? Maybe the turbines... Uh, the turbine casey, casings need to be built first, but I don't see them being crafted. Let me give it some time. I'll bring you back when I see what's going on. All right, guys, we're back, and I solved the issue. 
what it does when it tries to craft something and it's in the process of doing it, if it hasn't finished all of the processes, it will not begin to make even one. So what it does, those glasses that it was making was actually being stored in the system somewhere hidden where I couldn't access or take them out because then it'd have to start all over. So it keeps them in a safe inventory where I can't touch them. And when it finishes crafting all of the glass, then it goes on to the next craft and the next craft and so on until it can go ahead and start the full craft of all the things that it needs. So that's why it was uh, taking a long time. So here's all our glass. We got the rotor blades and the rotor shafts. And I'm gonna start with the turbine housing, but what I wanted to do while I'm doing this is go ahead and start with, uh, with the ludicrite blocks. We're gonna need 96 of them. Uh, so I wanted to get this going while we're working on something else. And we don't have enough pearls or shiny ingots this is probably doable. I can put this in the five times ore processing to get uh, uh, a huge number of them with my with the ores that I do have. But the pearls, I do have thousands and hundreds of thousands. I, what I can do here is go ahead. Well, I can leave it right there. What I can do is uh, ME glass cable it into using an import bus into the ME system with an accelerator card just to make it go quicker and we'll see if we can get some more pearls in there I don't want to grab all of them because it'll overflow my system I don't need that many uh, let's put the import bus there and some accelerator cards and we want to get is pearls and we're getting the pearls in there alright so I forget how many we needed uh, let's see if we can go ahead and try to craft it again I think it was 96. Let's just see what it needs. It needs 844. So yeah, let me work on the, the shiny ingots and then I'll bring it back when I'm ready and I have everything in my inventory. All right, guys, I do believe I have everything that I need to get this started. And I have a couple more glass downstairs in the ME system. I had to take one stack out just to fit all the stuff in here. But I think I did make a little bit too many or for some reason it made more than needed. I think it's because it looks at the target space and it sees if there's any in there. Or maybe there were already in there and I calculated wrong. Anyway, you know, I was looking at this and I was wondering, you know, I probably could have redesigned this a little bit better. I could have lifted this up maybe about three blocks high and then put the turbine housings and it would still reach back here because the highest point would be right here. So it would butt up against this wall right here if I did that. And then the turbine, uh, the reactor, would be just as high up here, leaving me room to use this elevator and be able to walk under it. And I may do that. The problem is this is cryothium, gelid cryothium. So I'd need to run a BC pump or an endothermic pump. Probably a BC pump, definitely. And get the liquid out of there into drum, a drum and, uh, and then move the whole fixture up. That's a job for another day. You'd think that it'd be better to do it now before I did the turbines. But in fact, I could build the turbines and put it up here now and then move the reactor up a bit. Either way, I'm fine with going ahead, going ahead and putting the turbines at a low level here and then moving the whole thing up. It's not a big deal. I could do that. So let's get started. Now, you guys probably seen this already, but I'd like to breeze through this. So I'm just going to do some cuts and show you quickly how I'm going to do it. I'm going to lay down a 7x7 seven seven all the way around. And this is why I, I picked these measurements precisely so that it would fit perfectly within the walls of this, just like that. And now we'll extend backwards with the glass. All right, let's take a look. Uh, let's fly around here. So you'll see I did the three casings here and I decided not to do the glass. I think I'm going to go with the fluid ports first. So red to red. This one stays. This one gets changed all the way around.
And there we are. So the next thing to do, we need the power ports. Three power ports, and I'm gonna place them right in the center, I guess. Right there. Right on the top. Easy access for the Tesseracts that will go on top of that. The, uh, the turbine bearings will go at the end, but we're gonna need some glass to hold it up. It'll go somewhere around here. Right there. And on all three. So it'll go there, and the last one, right there. What's next? We got the shafts and the rotor blades. Let's do one together. So the shafts will go from the bearing all the way to the end for a total of 14 of these rods. And I calculated more because I, uh, oh, we need some more turbine housings. Let's see. We could use glass at the end here, it doesn't matter. Let me use glass instead. Although I do have some turbine housings downstairs. I think it'll be more uh, realistic if I use the housings instead. I think they're called casings actually. Uh, turbine casings, I got 16. Let's use those instead. And we'll place one right there in the middle with the rods extending outward like that. The blades will go out, double on each, so we have a total of eight on each side. Now you'll notice I have a special tool with me today. I'll be using these wands to get ten rows of these in each turbine. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 9, 10. The rest are for the ludicrite blocks, which uh, each one of these turbines will have 32 of them. I guess I'll start from the top here, and we'll go all the way around. Actually, I did that one wrong, I believe. We'll go here. So it's going to be a donut of 8, and let's get rid of that one so that we can use a wand. Fortunately, it was easy to break. So that's two, that's three, that gives us a total of 24. One more should do it, right there. So we got 32 there, we got 32 for the next turbine and 32 for the last turbine, and I will do that right now. You know, one thing to make this even, I was thinking where to place the controllers. I could place them on the sides here, but then it'll sort of not be even on all sides because some of them will be facing forward the others will be facing on the side. If I do them at the ends, it would be symmetrical, but then it's hard to reach each one. So I'm going to place them right here next to the reactor so that all the controls are here and here. It'll be easier to reach, I think. So I'll just place it maybe next to the port. That'll be fine. Either left or right of the port, it doesn't matter. I'll place it right here. So we got an extra turbine housing. One thing I could have done, and I forgot to do it with you, is we could have done the insides of these parts here and this is easy though no biggie just folding this in um, the hard part that we have to do now though is this and I'm glad I got the wand because we have the super wand which is a little bit better than the other one with this one I won't need to reach under what I've built already as far as the fans, because I forgot to do the glass before putting the fans in, but really, it does not matter. It's gonna be the same because this super wand will be able to reach under there and through these turbine housing corners that we've built. One thing I would like to fill in though is just this extra line, because once it fills in, it's gonna miss these two blocks. So let's go ahead and try it out, see if it works. Seems to have worked just fine. It got the bottoms too there, inside the floor of the turbine housing. Last thing we need to do is cover up the ends here. And then I will do it for all of the other turbines that we're missing. Uh, let's go up with the wand. It'll make it a lot faster. And 
done. All right, one turbine housing down, two to go. All right, fellows, looks like we're done. We're on the last one. I'm just gonna finish this up with you. And then we'll, we'll, it looks like I got some extra glass that I probably made too many here. I think we did, like I said before. I think there was some glass that I didn't take account for inside the ME system, but no big deal. We are rich, so it doesn't matter. All right, so this set up a multi-block system. So that that's the indicator that this is complete. All of them did set the multi-block indicator, so we're all cool. And I don't mind the snow building up here. I could play some torches, but it really doesn't matter to me. Uh, this is all set. I think we should be able to run. The fluid ports are set to go ahead and start feeding the steam in there. And one thing I should have done before I continued building these turbines is go ahead and warm this up because this is going to take a little while to heat up a little oh you know what heat up right away we got steam i think we're ready to go let's give it a try let's uh turn the key a little bit let's see how this runs we'll disengage this way it'll get up to 1800 rpm as quickly as possible uh let's turn this off and turn that on I don't know why it's rotating. I set it not to turn on the, to disengage the coils, but for some reason it's still engaged. Oh, I see. Yeah, the turbines are gonna roll. It's just that it's not clutched. It's not connected to the engine, which produces the energy. So when I, when I see that it's 1800, I'll engage the coil, and then you'll see the RF go up. I'll give it a try right now so you can see. See how it's going up to a thousand and it's building up some storage in the battery buffer here. Let's disengage this. It'll lock there. It's zero RF putting out because I've disengaged it. So we'll let this run up to 1800. The thing is it goes a lot faster if you disengage the coils so you can get to the 1800 that you want, the sweet number. Uh, 900 is also a sweet number, 2700 also. We could probably run these turbines at 2700. I may do a little bit of a uh, tinkering with these guys, but probably off camera after I finish this episode, just to see if I can lock in a 2700 RPM um, setting on these turbines. And that'll produce a lot more RF per tick per turbine. We do have enough steam coming out of this boiler to be able to do that. I call this a boiler because it is in fact a boiler. It boils steam using radioactivity. Um, but really it is a reactor. Yeah, but these are the uh, the guys that will be producing the energy. We'll place a tesseract here and we'll connect all tesseracts to one channel into a capacitor bank and out of the capacitor bank will be our normal power channel. So let's take a look at this. Yeah, let's give this some time. I'll bring you right back. All right, guys, looks like we're coming up to our sweet number of 1800. I'm gonna go ahead and start engaging the uh, the clutch here. I think I'll do it right now. And we'll see what we're getting. About 28, 28.3. Yeah, and this'll start slowly getting up to the speed where it needs to be to idle. I think it's about uh, 95. It's at 96 now, it'll slowly get there. But you'll notice that this will start uh, getting closer to the number where it'll be solid. I think this is 28,000.2. 200 something 280 250 something like that. I don't remember but yeah, th this is working just fine Let's go ahead and engage this one. This probably went over it did went to 1900, but that's fine and uh, I'm gonna play around with trying to get it uh, over to 2700 you have to mess with these I think a little bit I don't remember but anyway guys what I'm gonna need from you guys is while I set this up to pull out you know what I'm gonna do right now though I need to break this and take it with me we could set the tesseract right on top I think the configs are set for it but if not I don't mind using a conduit that's fine um, what I'm thinking is let's get a name for this beast and I came up with a few myself but I want to see what you guys come up with uh, remember the other turbine is gonna go here I was thinking of maybe the uh, the four horse the hor the four horses 
of via power clips. Kind of clammy, kind of corny. Uh, maybe you can come up with a better name. But anyway, guys, I want to thank you for watching, and I'll catch you all next time.